Oh yeah, engine cores are good money, Brayden. Especially if it's an engine core like that, where I know I'm not going to need it, I'm not going to use it, and we probably already have multiple 210 engines sitting in storage. So yeah, that's, that's an easy 225k. So there we go. Once again, another quick mission under our belt. And it looks like we've created another... Oh, no, these are, these are missions in other systems. I thought we had uh, created a few missions by completing that one, but it does not appear to be the case. So, we have the Battle in the Badlands, which again, not great on salvage. Who are we up against on this one? Our local pirates. So we probably don't even necessarily need salvage on this mission. Like, there's a part of me that would say two picks and 11 randoms is not bad, but 750k isn't a bad payout either. Jason, Jason, J all right, all right, all right. I will hydrate. We will have some water. It's a good thing that you guys remind me to do this because I forget often. I mean, you know, Cody, the thing is the, the Draconis Combine have a thousand years of lying to themselves about the cultural significance of Bushido that they have to make up for. It's kind of like little man syndrome, but in terms of like... So, okay. I have to preface this. I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant. It's a mini rant, I promise. I'm not going to spend the next 30 minutes talking about it. But if you know anything about Bushido, if you spent any time studying it or anything like that, what Bushido actually was versus what we collectively, the world, and a lot of the Japanese tell themselves Bushido was are not the same thing. And when you remind Japanese people that Bushido is not just some code of honor and stuff, like, they get mad. Like, I, I have seen Japanese people get legit red in the face angry if you don't, you know, just have this reverence for Bushido as if it were, like, the greatest way to be a warrior. And it's like, nah, dude, it's not all that much different from every other warrior culture. Yeah, exactly. It, it's... It is based loosely on some tenets of the samurai, but it is in much the same way that, like, certain modern martial arts here in the West, it is largely the invention of a guy who just made some shit up and everybody believed him. Oh, don't get me, don't get me wrong. Cosmic. Like, the Hatamoto Chi is, is a respectable mech. I, I would not turn my nose up at one if we had one. Um, that's nothing to say, like... The Combine is a stereotype of 80s and 90s Japan as viewed through the lens of a big stompy robot game. So, you know, I, I don't apply any of those criticisms directly at the Japanese. I mean, after all, um, I'm, I'm a anime avatar on the internet and I play fucking anime music at the beginning and end of every stream, so... I think my own loyalties and enthusiasm for Japanese culture are well established at this point. Um, anyway, so what we what we were talking about the mission before I, I again I don't want to go down a thirty minute tangent about Japan and Japanese history because I'll be down that rabbit hole all day. Um, but here's what I'm thinking: if you look here. We have the Lyran Commonwealth. We are almost up to the next level of reputation with them. And I think at this level, the shot for Steiner unlocks. So what I'm thinking is if we pull down the money just a little bit, and we're not going to make hardly any money on this mission. We're not going to get any salvage on this mission. But we could level up. Then again, I don't think we really need to do that, if I'm being honest, because we're going to do that naturally. 
uh, if we just keep doing missions for Steiner, we're going to get there eventually anyway. So I think, I think once again, we go for the money. Um, what do you guys think? Is there anything... Oh, okay, Mara. See, that's what I was afraid of, is that you might actually have to ally with them, which I don't necessarily want to do. Um, but here's my question. Is there anything... And you guys are familiar with roughly what level we're at in terms of the campaign. Is there anything in the pirate arsenal that we need to keep an eye out for. Now, I know we could run into just random mechs that are good and things like that. Like, that's always a possibility. But, is there anything that we would really, really want? Do we go for the money or do we go for the salvage and hope that the salvage is worth more than the yeah. payout? Holy shit, Sierra! Sierra coming into the stream on a Saturday and immediately dropping a 10 sub bomb on the community. Jesus Christ, Sierra. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for that. You did not have to do it. I am, I am grateful beyond words. Thank you for the 10 subs. If you get a sub, be sure to thank Sierra for his massive generosity. And I assume massive I don't know I'm just guessing let's see have allies of faction to get their store yeah I and I I am vaguely aware of the fact that you have to you, you have to ally with factions to get access to their store and if I remember right Aside from weird places like Solaris and Outreach and a couple of other places, like, the only places you can buy mechs is in the faction stores, too, if I remember right. I could be wrong. So, it could potentially open up the ability to purchase a bunch of mechs, but we're not really making the kind of money where we can go around buying up mechs anyway. Um, I honestly, I think we just go with salvage, to be honest, because if we get that one oddball mech that's really, really good, it could change the game for us. Whereas money is just money. If we don't need whatever we salvage, we can always sell it. Oh, see, I didn't realize that there were, like, spe I mean, I know, again, there are some special shops like Outreach and, and things like that where you can only get certain things there, but I didn't realize that there were other shops as well, like faction shops. Um, well, I gotta make a decision. We're just sitting here burning time, so I think, I think, I think, I think. It's just pirate organization. It's just the pirates. Fuck it. We're gonna go with salvage. Because I know what's going to happen. I know exactly what's going to happen. Is I'm going to tell myself, oh, it doesn't matter. We're not going to salvage anything from the pirates that's worth a damn. And then we're going to get in there and it's going to be like, oh, here's an awesome. And you could have salvaged it if you hadn't decided to take the money instead. So it's like that's, it's that loot box mentality and I hate it. All right, here we go. Let's, let's, well, god damn it. Let's just load the Lance comp for starters and then I'll adjust from there. Uh, yeah, General Quarters are talking about lambs that we may be able to get from some of the faction stores um, if we can upgrade our reputation enough. Because we're, we're very close to getting, we're very close to getting to that point with Steiner where we can unlock the faction store. We would just have to ally with them. Ah, uh, let me see. We'll throw in the baby back heretic. Ah, uh, what else? What else? What else? We need our sniper griffin for Ozark. We need the centurion for general quarters. And then now we need to fill out the vehicle selections. So game master is getting their upgrade to a rommel. Um, I think Quagmire will go ahead and also upgrade to a rommel. 
We're going to throw in the ballista as well. And oh, shoot, chat. I just realized. I only have four, three vehicle slots. I thought we had four. Okay, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna Lance Comp again. I'm gonna save this. And I'm gonna back up. Because I didn't realize this until just now. Shit! Yeah, I would need to get the last tank slot, but in order to do that, we need the high-capacity power circuits. And that's gonna be 30 days. But I think... I've been waiting for the point where that was... Where we got to the point where we needed it, and I think we're at that point now. So I say we're gonna go ahead and purchase it. It's gonna take a little while. But we'll go ahead and get the upgrade to that so that we can get our last uh, vehicle bay upgrade. And I think that'll give us the last mech bay upgrade as well, won't it? Yeah. So that'll increase our mech only slots to four. And uh, we'll also increase our drop weight limit. So we'll be able to get both of those. But this one's going to be very, very expensive. Uh, okay. In the meantime, do we take two Rommels or do we take the... Well, we still have mechs with the handholds for the battle armor, so we still have a way to get the battle armor into combat. It's not the end of the world. Uh, battle in the Badlands, against the pirates, max salvage. And load the lance comp. Load. Battletech, there we go. Alright. Um, oh, well we can't take the battle armor anyway because Bigfoot is currently out of action. So, irrelevant. But yeah, I think we can do I think we can do some good damage with two Rommels. Two Rommels plus artillery plus our seven mech lance. Let's make it hot, Chad. Just the tip. Just the tip. Holy shit, Dark Sarah tipping ten dollars. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hopefully that will go through. I had some issues with Streamlabs like denying my payments a little while ago, so hopefully I get that fixed. I did talk to him over the phone, but I appreciate it. Thank you for the ten dollars. Again, you don't have to do that, but I absolutely appreciate it when you do. This one, it's kind of weird. I don't know why the soundbite didn't work. I have a soundbite for that. Let me see. Just the tip. Just the tip. Yeah, that's weird. Are you guys not hearing that soundbite? Why do you do this to me, Streamlabs? Okay, well, if you guys are hearing it, great. If I, I'm not hearing it, so as long as you guys are hearing it, that's what matters. Yeah, that's that's my little present for those of you who choose to to donate money. Because again, you don't have to do that, and I absolutely appreciate it. Well, good, Dark Sarah. I'm I'm glad that I could get you back into the mood for some battle tech because I know, you know, the the desire to play it comes and goes. So if uh, if me being here and playing it with you can make you want to play it as well, then I think that's good. It's it's healthy for the community to keep going. Yeah, yeah, it is, Sarah. It's just the tip. Just the tip. Don't feel bad, Cosmic. Just just because you are new to the franchise does not mean that your love for it has any less value. 
Again, I am I am probably not like most Battletech fans in that I don't try to gatekeep the franchise. I don't try to say, you know, you aren't a true fan because you haven't been playing since the 90s. You aren't a true fan because you like an era that I don't like or you like mechs that I don't like. Like I make jokes about that kind of stuff, but it's it's just jokes. Like at the end of the day, Battletech is a great franchise, it's a great setting, and I think the more people we can get into it, the better. So, if you got into it because of me, great. If you got into it and found me after, that's great too. Glad to have you. Alright, let's see. What, what's, what's the sage wisdom from Darius? A partial lance of damaged mechs doesn't sound too bad, Commander. Oh great, thanks Darius. You just jinxed the whole fucking mission. If we're about to bring them down mostly intact, this could mean excellent salvage opportunities. Well, we will see. They're pirates. Command interface initiated. Okay, Cosmic. And yeah, and, and I, I understand there's actually a lot of people that have joined the that have joined the fandom, the Battletech fandom, in the last few years, not only Just because of Battletech tip. the game, Just but the also tip. because um, all the people like Tex and Big Red and the people that have tried to revive the setting through their lore videos and things like that, so. Well, there you go. BTA equates to 1,678 hours of gameplay. Yes, absolutely. And... Typhoon, thank you for the $7.31 shekels. Says, here's some sea bells. We appreciate it. Absolutely appreciate it. Again, you don't have to do it, but I, I uh, again, uh, beyond words in appreciation when you guys decide to do that. All right, let's see. Now that, now that Darius has jinxed the whole damn mission... Let's see how our brand new Rotary Goss Centurion is going to do against some pirates. What do you say? And look at that. We've already got visual. What the hell is a Von Roars? Never heard of that before. 65 ton mech with some binary lasers and rocket launchers. Okay. All right. Doesn't sound bad. It's a little lightly armored for a heavy mech, but that might just be the configuration. Also looks like we're up against the map edge currently. So we'll have to see. Uh, but once again, the game has been generous enough to start us in an elevated position, so... I'd be a fool not to use that to our advantage. Rolling. Oh, we've got a 75 tonner down there as well. Yeah, all right. Things are getting interesting. And we got a trib. This trib is a brawler trib. It's a 5S fitted out with SRMs and medium lasers. All right. Yeah, cause we got... I mean, there are plenty of people out there that play Battletech. It's just, you know, the, the algorithm... The algorithm doesn't really like to put Battletech content out there if it doesn't get a bunch of views. So I've, I've been very fortunate in that regard that uh, the algorithm has put me in front of so many people and that people apparently like the content that I'm putting out. So, um, yeah, that's true, Dark Sarah. Um, optimists often don't have uh, very great careers when it comes to military analysts. We're going to go ahead and shoot an arrow at this. Like, okay, I'm only just now seeing it up close. And, and I'm... Are you guys seeing this? Are you seeing this? Tell me this doesn't look like a toy. Like... This looks like somebody drew a battle mech from memory, but they're not a good artist. Bravo! Bravo for bringing an oversized children's toy to the battlefield. 
Yeah, exactly, King of Kings. It's basically a rock'em, sock'em robot. That's exactly what it looks like. Uh, to me, anyway. Again, bravo for bringing a children's toy to a battlefield. You have my... my respect. And welcome, King of Kings, to the stream. Good to see you. Hopefully your Saturday's going well. I have not watched any of Sven's videos, although they do often end up in my feed. I just, uh, unfortunately, I don't have as much time to watch a lot of YouTube videos as I used to, which is kind of sad. Like, I miss those days. So I'm firing our indirect stuff at this, uh, again, Von Roars, I guess that's how you pronounce that, I'm not 100% sure. Um, even though they all have a lot of high evasion because of the spawn protection, I'm doing it anyway. Yes, Commander. Is it the smart thing to do? No. Am I doing it anyway? Absolutely. Because that's how we do in this company. Aye, aye. Uh, I doubt very seriously that I'm going to de get a decent shot at this guy, but again, I'm a shooter. I like to shoot. On it. Wow, we actually hit, and we exposed structure. Okay, I did not see that one coming. Awaiting orders. So let's see. Uh, I think we're about to have a treb fight. We're about to have some treble and treb violence, is what we're about to have. Move order confirmed. There's a part of me that wants to shoot at the treb. Like, really, really wants to shoot at the treb. But... There's the other part of me that knows that I should be focusing down my targets. Uh. Well, we'll save the Trev on Trev violence for next turn. Roger that. Because that's exactly what I was hoping for. Critical hit. My flamer is empty. Screw you and your spawn protection, you friggin' robot toy. So in spite of the fact that we have boosts to our sensors and visuals, I'm only seeing three mechs currently, which is a little concerning. Although they're pretty heavily tonned. Yeah, I guess I deserve that one. Jimbo, good to see you back. Glad you could join us on this Saturday stream. Yeah, 75 ton are hanging in the back. It could be an Orion, and I wouldn't... I, I would absolutely field an Orion if we could get our hands on one. Hmm, let's see. Who's next? I guess we take Carrick. Um... We don't have any direct line of sight to the enemies, but that's okay, because Carrick's in a ballista. So, even though we've got a 32% chance, the great thing about artillery is you don't have to be especially accurate with it. Whiff the shit out of that one, though. Yeah. I, you know what? I'm okay with a Marauder, too. Give me a Marauder. Give me a friggin' Warhammer. Give me an Orion. I'm good. As long as it's not another Grasshopper. Don't get me wrong, I got nothing against the grasshopper that we put together, but I'm looking for something a little beefier. Correct, Dark Sarah. Correct. Horseshoes, hand grenades, and a 155 millimeter. Yeah. Uh, Ozark, our sniper. I mean, we might as well put her on the case. If anybody was going to get that hit, let's see. Um, if I move over here... Roger that. Yeah, we don't have great chances to hit. We could go for the Treb instead. Fire. Yeah, might as well. I think I nice. Breach the armor on the first shot. Jesus. Uh, I think these pirates walked into the wrong goddamn room, apparently. All right, Centurion with the Rotary Goss. We do have a minimum range to consider. Chat. 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 
All right, Natter, it was good to see you. Glad you could join us for a little while. Hopefully you enjoyed the stream. And uh, again, keep an eye on the Twitter machine. I don't know when I'll be live next because my schedule's a little goofy, but hopefully we'll see you next time. And enjoy your weekend if we don't see you till then. But to chat, if you're not paying attention, we have a trib with no evasion. We have an elevated position. I think, Natter, before you go, you have to watch us give this thing a three-round volley from the Gauss. Send it. Oh my god, That's yes. If I had a p it would be fully erect. That was beautiful. We got all three shots. That is outstanding. It didn't do as much damage as I expected, though. That's that's the disappointing part for me. Light damage. Holding firm. Yeah, we, yeah, that was a hell of a light show. It was... Oh, okay. Well, we we didn't till him, but we basically stripped all the armor off the the arm and shoulders. So he's he's down to about half his armor capacity. Correct, Sierra. We are ammo sexual in this chat. We get excited when the big guns go pew pew. Rommel, Rame! Inaugural, inaugural outing for the Rommels. Why can you really? 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 See, Chad, this is the thing that I'm talking about, where when you make bad decisions and you do stuff like moving your tank where you think they should have a shot, but they don't, because it turns out the tank itself is not as tall as the mechs. So even though the mechs have no problem with seeing the enemy from that position, the tank does not. And the tank does not actually have a shot. Again, this is the cult of bad tactical decisions. We only have one flavor of Kool-Aid and it's Ecto Cooler, but I never promised that we knew what we were doing. So, I guess Quagmire is not going to take the first shot in anger right. with a Rommel. Well, if I'm being fair, I feel like it's probably more appropriate for that person to be Game Master anyway. So Game Master, give him the business. Target confirmed. Oh yes. Oh, yes. So how much ammo does this thing actually have? I wish it would tell me. I'll have to look when we select it again. That's a lot of hits on a tank that they can't see. That's pretty impressive. But it uh, looks like our friends are starting to come out of the woodwork back here. We can wrap up the engagement with these couple of guys quickly, then we'll be able to focus on other things. Uh, let's see. Can we melee? We cannot melee. We can get close enough to roast a fool, though. That's, that's one thing that we can do. And I think that's exactly what we're gonna do. I would ask Rex which person they want to roast, but since uh, they're not here, I guess we'll have to make the decision ourselves. That's going to put us on the heat threshold, but screw it. It's full alpha time, chat. Send it. I'm going to roast this rock'em sock'em robot. And there you go. Engine destroyed. Pilot incapacitated. Oh, I kind of feel bad for that robot. It looks so sad laying there on the ground like that. Oh, okay, alright, we're getting a few more contacts out there, so this is... This looks like it might turn into a... Oh my, look what it is! Look what it is! You called it! You called it! There's the Orion. And, uh, is missing its primary weapon system, the AC-10. Was that another one? Did I just see another Orion? Yeah, alright, we got two. 
We get a VA and a K out here on the field. Well, this engagement just got a lot more interesting, and I'm suddenly very, very glad that I took Max Salvage on this mission. Alright, well, first things first, we gotta get Gravelion moving around a little bit. And we will need to put some hurt down range on these guys. Um, cause those Orions can definitely put the pain on us. Especially this one, cause he's still got his A10, AC10 functional. Yeah, hopefully, Mara. My hope is that between the two of them, we'll get enough salvage that we can put at least one together. And I'm not even really picky about which variant. Like, I'm good with just a standard K, Orion. Like, you can do all kinds of stuff with that. Uh, I think, I think, I think, I think. Normally, I would put the mortars on the Treb, but I don't think the Treb is going to be, well, you know what? We're close to knocking this treb down. Now nah, we'll put the mortars on the Orion. Because those are some heavy boys, and we're going to need to start putting some damage on them as soon as we can. So, you can still make called shots, Cody. The only problem is, it's a much more restricted skill than it used to be. Where Precision Strike used to just let you call your shots on everything, now it's an actual specific late game ability. It's at, uh, I think it's at level 7 or level 9 of gunnery, when your pilots are able to make called shots. So, like, you have to specialize a pilot in gunnery in order to make called shots now. On the flip side, it's still a very powerful ability, especially for pilots that are accurate. For orders. So we got Bolo again with the fat man. And I think we're going to just continue to put the hurt on this Orion K. Waiting for orders. So it's time for some berry baby back heresy. I think I'll move forward. We'll ignore the treb for now. Again, we, we got some heavy boys here, so we're going to need to try and take at least one of them off the field as quickly as possible. And I'm focusing the K because the K still has its AC-10. Yeah, that's true, Cosmic. There is a an FCS or a targeting system or something that lets you make called shots as well. Yes, Commander. All right, Brick. Uh, I think it's well. You know what? We could we could just maintain the elevated position we have. So I'm gonna take the shot here, and of course we will use the missiles before we use the lasers. And that trib has now had the worst of days. Never discount rocket launchers, especially at close range and medium range. And especially when you've got a rocket feed reloader, because uh, those boys hurt. Especially when you got somebody who's got good gunnery, so you know you're going to connect with a lot of your shots. Alright, um... We still got 99% accuracy. Is it worth taking all three shots on the Orion? We got 13 ammo, so we could afford another couple of full volleys. Let's see, what else? We got a 55 ton, we got an unknown, we got an unknown, and we got a vehicle. I mean, to me, the Orions are definitely the biggest threat right now, because they're both very beefy, and they're going to take a lot of damage to put down. And with this particular Orion only having one evasion right now, I don't think we're going to get a better shot to land, or a better chance to land all three shots in a single go. So I say we do it. I say we give them the full volley. Here comes the full alpha chat. Copy that, Commander. You love to see it. All three connected, plus the full volley on the LRMs. We are 
We are putting some holes in this man. As it should be. As it should be. What the hell is that noise? Okay, this is what? I can't quite make that out. What is that? Chameleon. A chameleon. Of all the things that you could have brought to this fight, you brought a chameleon. Alright. I'm not gonna complain. That's free salvage. Unfortunately, it's gonna delete dilute the salvage pool a little bit. Um, can we get a side shot? We cannot get a side shot. That is unfortunate. Heading out. So, alright, we'll move for a little bit of evasion, and we will continue to put the hurt on this Orion. Alright, we got an armor breach. We destroyed one of the LRM-15s, that's good. Alright, let's see what else is going to come crawling out of the woodwork. We got two more mechs. Okay, Shadowhawk. Is that a wreck? What the hell was that? A Shadowhawk, oh no, with a howitzer. Well, chat, we already know how dangerous a howitzer can be, especially left untended. So we may need to reprioritize our targets here in just a second. I'm still going to focus down this Orion as best I can so we can at least get that off the field, but, uh... Yeah, it's definitely an interesting Shadowhawk. The Howitzer, I believe, doesn't actually count as artillery, though. I think it counts as a ballistic mount. We'll go ahead and hit him with the, the sniper artillery. We should get some good splash damage. We've almost managed to knock this Orion down with as much damage as we've put on it, and that in and of itself is pretty impressive, because Orions are very steady mechs. That's that's the power of multiple Gauss rifle shots, which I say right before we put another Gauss rifle shot on this dude. And there goes the torso, and he's taking a dirt nap. Take a break, sucker. Confirmed. Not enough to get an evasion bonus, but that's all right. Uh, we will take the shot at this guy, and the AC-10 is going to be in the right arm, right? If I remember correctly. We see. I think it's the right arm. Yeah. No, well, maybe it's the torso. I think it's the torso. Alright, so we'll take a shot at the torso then. If we can take out the torso, we basically cripple this mech. Target confirmed. Uh, well, we did not get the shot. We got a hit, but we did not hit what we were aiming at. Unfortunate. Alright, let's see. Alright, whatever it is, it's got a PPC. Still don't know what it is, but we know it's a 70 tonner now, so that could be another threat. So I'll have to be careful. Uh, unfortunately, the Saturday Night Fever is very close to overheating. So we will have to... I think we're just going to have to brace up this turn. I don't like it, but we need to get our heat down. And if we can put a heavy mech down there on the field to give them something else to shoot at, give our people up on the ridge line more availability to keep plunging fire, because this elevation bonus is definitely going to help us. Again, this Orion is not going to be as much of a threat on account of the fact that it's missing its AC-10, but we cannot discount those LRMs. Alright, so here comes the other Orion getting himself back up. Let's see what he's going to do. Is he going to do anything? Battle take? Annie, are you okay? There we go. He finally figured it out. And they do not like Quagmire. I'm telling you. 
Then again, vehicles are free repairs. The pilots are definitely in danger if they get destroyed, but at the end of the day, it's free repairs, so... I'm okay with them taking the hits if it keeps that damage off our mechs. Uh, I could move Gravel Lion up just a little bit and put a sensor lock on this unknown 70-ton mech. But at the same time, this Orion has still got its AC-10, so I think we're going to continue to focus on it. Because the sooner we can get him off the field, the better. And there goes the right torso. So now that Orion is... Well, I was going to say he's a non-threat. He's definitely a non-threat when the pilot ejects. Commander? And Bolo! Oh, we got a big cluster of enemies in the back, so it sounds like a Battle Lord uh, splash damage on a Shadowhawk with an arrow. To me. So here we go. Bam. With the splash damage. You love to see it. And we set the forest on fire. Uh, uh. Aye, aye. Alright, we got Brick with the Treb and all the rockets. An almost limitless number of rockets. Let's see. How much evasion can we get from movement? Looks like two evasion at most. So we'll move this direction, and I think I would like to hit the Shadowhawk. But we kind of blocked our shot with that, so... I think instead, we go for the Chameleon Laser Boat. If we can take it off the field before it gets in close. We'll take the shot. I really should be shooting at the Orion, but the Chameleon will be easier to get off the field. It's slower, it's got lower armor, so... It's one less thing to be shooting at us. And we got an LRM Hetzer, that's the mystery vehicle. Standing by. Yeah, artillery really, really is a game changer in BTA. Like... I mean, it's a game changer in modern warfare as well, but especially in BTA, like, once you have the ability to send massive damage downrange in AoE, like, that is when the game really starts to change. Hmm. <laughs> so if I run up here, we'll get some elevation. But we won't be able to hit anything. I could run up here instead. How much elevation does that actually give us? Oh my. Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, it gives us good elevation above the enemy, but it's also going to interfere with sight lines. However, that might give us a visual on that last 70 ton mech in the back. It did. Oh my goodness, Chet. Oh my good lord Jesus, chat. Are you seeing the mechs? These are pirates. These are pirates. And they have brought multiple Orions, a Howitzer Shadowhawk, and now a freaking Warhammer. These are the best equipped pirates I have ever seen. Wow. Okay, well now I don't know what I want to salvage from this mission. Also, Cody, the 1500 bits. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much for the tips. Absolutely appreciate it. Once again, you don't have to do that, but... Again, we appreciate it. And again, thank you for stopping by. Hopefully your day at work goes well. And uh, if you don't make it in time to catch the rest of the stream, because I have no idea how long I'm going to keep going... Feel free to have a look at the VOD when you do get off, and you can catch whatever you missed. Yeah, no, clearly, like, these guys are the best- This is the Jack Sparrow thing, like, you are the best equipped pirates I've ever heard of. Alright, well, uh, again, I think we're gonna focus down the chameleon for the time being. But yeah. A Warhammer? 
that that's my priority salvage right there. But you have heard of me. And incidentally, I, I forget what these guys' names are, this flaming V, whatever the hell that is. But like, we've run into and dealt with this particular pirate outfit multiple times during this campaign. So this is not our first tango with these guys. And it seems like every time we whip their ass, they come back with bigger guns than last time. Waiting for orders. You gotta applaud that tenacity. Alright, do we waste a Gauss Rifle shot on a Chameleon? I feel like the answer is no, but I feel like, again, guns off the field. Yeah, clearly the Chameleon is just like they stole it from some mech high school. Like, it's it's the, it's the B-plot of an anime episode where, you know, the, the, the popular kids steal the mech from from the high school garage I listen here Sierra that's that's Critical don't you go getting that shit stuck in other people's heads because while being a pirate is all right with me I don't know if everyone else is going to be okay with that and Chet I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't know, don't look it up. Do not look it up. Because you are never going to get that song out of your head. So I'm telling you, you don't want to know. Don't go look it up. You have been warned. Right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once again, we're just going to keep moving back and forth to keep our evasion up. Uh, we will hit them with a the full alpha. Again, I just want this chameleon gone, so please... Somebody kill this damn thing. Ready for orders. God damn it, guys. Uh, alright. I think we're gonna hit the Orion in the middle because you've got the greatest potential for splash damage to more targets. Target acquired. So we did not get splash damage on anybody, but we did a decent amount of damage to the Orion. Now with Quagmire, um, we'll move over here to get two evasion, which isn't a whole lot, but it is what it is. Uh, we'll take the Gauss Shut and the Shriek Lasers at this Chameleon. Please just fucking go into the darkness, dude. Go into the darkness. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we destroyed the cockpit. Well, oh no, it was destroyed because he ejected. Never mind. I'm ready. Ah, uh, let's see. Again, we will move for some evasion, and then we will take a shot at. What do we want to take a shot at? I think the Shadowhawk has still got to be the priority target. Get rid of that howitzer. Roger that. I do, I do love the way that, like, whenever somebody gets hit with just a Gauss, it reminds me of, like, you know how in Kung Fu movies, they put the chalk on their hands and feet so when they hit somebody, it looks like they hit them hard even when they didn't? Like, that's... That's what it looks like to me whenever a mech gets hit with a Gauss rifle and nothing else. When there's no other fireworks to accentuate that hit, it just, like, it looks so underwhelming. Affirmative. Alright, we cannot hit them with the full alpha on the Shadowhawk, but we can hit the Orion with the full alpha. In fact, if I battle Lord... Yeah. That's going to be an extra 30 heat. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So we can go with the pulse lasers. 
And then we can battle lord on the pulse lasers to increase the damage, maybe get some good damage on the Shadowhawk, or we can go with the full alpha on the Orion without battle lord. I think we stand to do more damage with battle lord. So I'm going to do it. And then we're going to hit him with all the pulse lasers. Say goodbye. I got to say kung fu hustle was for me probably like it was probably one of the last kung fu movies that I ever watched but it was definitely my favorite and I think it's part of the reason that I don't watch kung fu movies as much anymore other than like the classics because after watching kung fu hustle I was just like I don't think you could do better than this because it's that perfect blend of like comedy and seriousness and all the kung fu tropes like it just it was such a perfect mix it was like the kung fu genre distilled and so i was like i like this is the high water mark i don't think they're ever going to do better than this it's absolutely over the top but that's why i love it firing all weapons and there goes the right torso which i believe is the primary weapon system no, that's just a medium laser, so he's still got the howitzer. If he does, where the hell is it? Oh, it's in the other torso. Well, that's unfortunate. What are your orders, Skipper? Ah, uh, let's see. Grab a lion and his panther. We'll move for evasion, even though we don't really need it. Um, we'll go ahead and dump the mortars on him. And he still refuses to go down. Bet. There's nothing wrong with sea shanties, Sierra. I mean, I guess, obviously, the classic sea shanty that everybody's familiar with right now is the Wellerman, because it kind of blew up last year or the year before, whenever the hell it was. But, uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's catchy. Catchy AF, some might say. So I know this thing is a brawler, but I don't... Th yeah, we can't actually get in close range with anybody without charging, and I don't like charging. Um, alright, we'll back up a little bit. We're not even gonna get any evasion, but that's okay. And then we'll take some plasma shots at the Shadowhawk, and hopefully take this bastard off the field. Again, go into the darkness. Yeah, I don't like that howitzer. I do not like it. I do not like green eggs and ham. Oh, are we gonna... There we go. Brick. 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 Listen, Brick. I'm gonna need you to take this Shadowhawk off the field. You think you can do that for me? Just just launch all the missiles, okay? Please kill this freaking Shadowhawk. Target's taking a critical hit. Are you fucking serious right now? Waiting for orders. Guys, how many of you have seen Face Off? The movie yeah. Face Off? Holy shit, Bolo. Coming in with 10 more gifted subs. Bolo has indeed sent it. Thank you once again, Bolo, for the gift subs. I, I again, massively appreciated. Not, not to be outdone. Again, you don't have to do that, but we always, always appreciate it when you do. But anyway, like I was saying, if you've ever seen Face Off. And at the very end of the movie, when Nicolas Cage 
shoots John Travolta with the frickin' harpoon gun and screams, die, in his most Nicolas Cage voice. I want you to imagine that that's what's going through my head every time I have to use another full alpha volley and this Phoenix Hawk is still standing. I'm not going to scream like that because I don't have it in me. I don't have my, like, my vocal cords can't do that and my lung capacity can't do that. But I want you to imagine the commander just screaming, die. General quarters, this is going to be it. This, this is going to be the one. I can feel it. Thank you, time. sweet Jesus. Not only did it take all that to kill that person, we took him down to minus one health. That is like, that is the same significant as going into the negatives in D&D. &D. When you are so close to death and just will not die, and then you take that one big hit. I'm listening. Good lord. That, that was the dude who refused to die. My hat's off to that guy. Alright, let's see. So I think we need to focus down the Hetzer next. I know the Orion is a threat, but it's not a huge threat because it's AC-10 is out of commission. Meanwhile, this Hetzer can put 30 LRMs on target with no problem. You did indeed, General Quarters, get them outstanding work. Outstanding work. So I think we focus down the Hetzer because it's going to be pretty beefy anyway. Um, and it is going to take us some time to take him down. So I think it's better that we start doing that now. Here goes everything. Yeah, I have not seen Renfield, Dark Sarah, but I have heard he is great at that movie. And and the, I think I talked about this last stream, or I may have just had a conversation with somebody about it and got it mixed up. But, like, so many people think that Nick Cage is a bad actor because of, like, the stuff that he does. And I'm like, no, like, like the way he acts, he does that on purpose. Like, it, that's the way he wants to act. He is 100% doing that intentionally. On target. What the hell shot was that, Carrot? Good lord. Put that one in a different zip code. Jesus. Alright, I should be moving the tanks for evasion. I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to use the focus firepower. Or, I'm sorry, intensify firepower. And we're going to try and take this Hetzer off the field. On it. Tango down. Outstanding. Outstanding. You love to see it. I have not seen Unbearable Weight, but I have been told that it's very, very good. Um, it's one of those movies that I really want to see, but just have never gotten around to. Yeah, we, we are making some good shots with these Gauss rifles. Like, this is... This is the punch that we needed. Good lord. Actually, you know what? Game Master just... Damn, I was hoping... Because I know we didn't give him the called shot ability, but I was hoping we could get it because he's maxed out on... Uh... You are correct, Bolo. You see two Rommels. We just bought two. And I bought the Rotary Goss. So we have the best of both worlds. Try to decide. I think we go after the Orion. Well, I don't know. What's what's this Warhammer packing in the back here? Kim PPC, which is busted. Uh, oh, so he's not much of a threat at all. I will absolutely take those parts as salvage. But he's not going to be much of a threat to us. So yeah, I think we focus down this Orion. Yeah, it's it's a pirate warhammer. So I can understand the the chem PPC. You, you see some weird fits in the pirate organizations. But yeah, if we can get our hands on enough parts, 
That Warhammer is priority one. I absolutely want as many of those parts as, as, as we can get our hands on. So I'm going to try not to burn this thing to the ground if I can. And what that's going to mean, I think, is we are going to have to bully the shit out of this Warhammer. And turn all that off. Um, I think we redline it. I think we go in, we kick, we redline it with the medium pulses. Let's see what we can do. Confirmed. Make it happen, Rex. To hell with the weapons. There we go. There's 70 damage. And here come the pulse lasers. Outstanding, outstanding. God, this heat. That's all right. Go ahead and shoot at the baby bag. She's still got plenty of armor. We can take it. Alright, grab a lion. Unfortunately, there's not going to be a whole lot that you can do to the Orion without hitting our allies. So instead, I think I'm going to have you take a shot at the Warhammer. But yeah, I think we're going to need to melee the shit out of this Warhammer to try to get him to eject. Because if we can get him to freak out and eject and get maximum salvage on that... Oh yeah? Oh yeah. But the first part of that is, if we can put some mortars on him, that's good for some stability damage. Oh, okay. Uh, if he got a picture, give me just a second. We can make that happen. Do you already have the link? Well, screw it. Uh, it it'll give you 60 seconds. Ah, uh, let's see. There you go. You got 60 seconds to post the link. If that's not enough, let me know. Commander. Alright. Speaking of Bolo. Bolo with the holy fat man. Um, I think we can probably hit the Warhammer. Maybe? I don't know. We may have to aim at the ground. The arrow was a little difficult because we got our people mixed in. Ah, uh, let's see. I think we take a chance. Shoot the arrow at the Warhammer. Hopefully we don't hit our people. Lucky bastard. That was a solid hit. Oh, did we hit our people? Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Let's see. Let me let me have a look at this link. God damn you, Twitch. Holy shit. That is, in fact, a lot of mags. Outstanding work, Bolo. That is, that is a hell of a company you got there. Including the Super Heavies and the dropships. That's a lot of work. Good job. Well done. As, as someone who has also painted minis, I, I feel for you there. That's a lot of time and effort invested. Copy that. All right, let's give the Orion some more plasma. Well, you know, Bolo, even if the wife says you spend too much time basing, Commander. you remember, I'm sure, if you've painted any amount of Warhammer, the rule of thumb is faces and bases. Well, mechs don't have faces, so that means you gotta spend extra time on the bases on to really make them pop. Alright, Brick. Do me proud here. Let's get this Orion off the field. As a matter of fact, I'm even gonna give you Battle Lord. Let's do even more damage. And we'll throw in a couple of lasers. We can get away with it. It's not a full alpha, but it's a lot of damage. Let's do it. Alright, that's a torso. That's acceptable. That's acceptable. 
That's a whole lot of things we destroyed just now. Alright, and general quarters with the Centurion. Again, we'll move a little bit for evasion, even though we don't really need it at this point. And then we will give them the business. Actually, you know what? How much? I don't know, this Warhammer's only got one evasion. I think we give them the full three round burst. Let's do it. Oh yeah, you love to see that. Expose the structure on the Warhammer, so now we just need to finish off the Orion. Commander. And then get in close and bully the shit out of this, uh, this Warhammer until we knock him down and make him panic eject. So we're gonna start bringing some of the heavier mechs down the hill. Uh, we will give him the SRMs. Again, I would like to salvage this Orion, but my first priority is gonna be that Warhammer. If we can get both, even better. But we already have one Warhammer part in storage. Standing by. Uh, let's see. Ballista self-propelled. We'll probably do a little splash damage to our own guys, but that's alright. Again. Holy shit. Well, that's literally the opposite of what I wanted to do. Fuck. I mean, good shot, but that was literally the worst case scenario. Well, F's in the chat for the Warhammer. I guess we're going to have to focus on the Orion after all. Commander. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... Rather than fire the gas rifles at the Orion, I'm going to peel back that firepower a little bit. And we'll focus on doing little bits of damage. While we bring up the mechs. I'm receiving you. As a matter of fact, Game Master, I'm not even going to fire with you because we have stripped so much armor off of this Orion. I think we're just going to focus entirely on melee. It looks like our Warhammer dream is going to be just just a little further out of reach, unfortunately. You've got my attention. All right, we're not even going to fire the weapons. We are just going to bully this guy. And I'm going to go for maximum stability damage, so we're going to be doing punches instead of kicks. Because he's already panicked. Excuse me? Well, there we go. That wasn't what I was going for, but I'll take it. We already know we got one Orion part from the other one. So this one just gave us three. That's good. That is outstanding. So well done, Rex. Who I know is no longer in the chat with us this, this afternoon, but... All the same. Good work. Literally, best case scenario on that one. Especially after the massive disappointment of the direct engine hit on the fucking Warhammer. Yeah, Orion is a great mech, and will definitely pay dividends if we can put one together. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get four picks, so we will have to rely on some degree of randomness if we want to get one. That's the part that I don't like. Uh, but of course, we did achieve all of our secondary objectives, so we got a decent-ish payout. And nobody should have gotten injured. Everybody's in good shape. And we didn't even take any armor breaches. So yeah, again, outstanding scenario there. So yeah, we've only got two picks. And that's going to make it real hard real hard for us to get that Orion. And keep in mind, this is with me taking maximum salvage picks. Like, I didn't, I didn't take any money. Oh, one more picture? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me just a second. There you go. How about you, Snake? Alright, let's, let's see what, oh my. Yeah, well then, 
I like that you say it's a 40k issue. That's, that's definitely an issue. Congrats on the tanks, by the way. I've never, I've never quite had the balls to paint a tank all the way through, so. And that's a lot of vehicles. Yeah, but let's see. I mean, we've got five Orion parts available. We're getting 11 picks. But the chances that we get a full Orion salvage are so statistically small, I don't know if it's worth it. Because there's so much other salvage on the field, like, we're gonna, we would have to take two Orion parts and then just hope. Hope and hope and hope that we get two more. Um, on the other hand, we already have one Warhammer part, so we could take the other. Take another Warhammer part, and then hopefully find more down the line. Oh, you're you're trying to bribe me now. Okay, all right. Uh, all right. Well, here's what I'll do. I'll take one from each variant, so that way, if we do get the right picks, then we'll be able to build either or. I mean, I'm not much of an optimist, especially not recently. But here we go. We're going to roll on the loot box. Let's see what happens. We got one Orion part and we got the Warhammer. Okay, so we did not, in fact, get the full Orion. That's unfortunate, but that's okay. Because three Orion parts means if we run into another one at any point, we'll be able to rebuild it. And if we're getting into the part where we're going to start seeing heavy mechs on the regular, the chances that we run into another Orion is only going to get higher with time. Plus, I like that we got the Warhammer part as well, because that gets us one step closer to a Warhammer. And yeah, improved binary lasers is definitely not a bad get either. Uh, that means that in the event that we get our hands on another fire starter, we could potentially build another Disco Inferno. Although I don't know what we would do with two of them. Well, then again, if we had two... If we had two, then we could do duo duels in the light mech category. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, we're we're brainstorming here, chat. We're having some ideas. Yeah, that's really disappointing, though. That I, I mean, again, I knew that the chances were astronomically small that we got enough parts for the Orion, but I'll be damned if I wasn't sitting here wanting it. I, I it would have been great. It would have been great. I'm telling you, I could have been a contender.